복사라 이즈 Welcome back everyone, this is Lee, and yes, today's the day, we'll be talking about the best way to develop your film. Yes, we'll be talking about Negative Lab Pro versus thedarkroom.com. So, without further ado, let's begin. Now with Negative Lab Pro, you'll definitely need Lightroom in order to use this plugin. Negative Lab Pro costs roughly $100 flat fee, whereas the Lightroom costs about $10 per month. So keep in mind, without Lightroom, you won't be able to use Naked Lab Pro anymore. So this is a huge commitment if you guys are diving into this whole scanning your own film thing. And also I made a video on this, but you also need to scan your film with a mirrorless or a DSLR camera with a macro lens. I'll leave a link down below on how I did my own scanning on my film. Now with darkroom.com, all you have to do is send in your negatives, have them develop your negatives, and they do offer you an option, three options of course, if you want to scan your film, small, medium, large. Medium is about 11 by 14. They charge about $3 more. And of course, the super scan, the large is basically $8 more. So the bigger your scan, the more time it takes, of course. So they're definitely gonna charge you a bit for that. Now, with that in mind, what kind of scanner is the darkroom.com using to scan your film, right? They're using Noritsu, yeah, is basically one of the industry standards to scan your film alongside with Frontier. Frontier is also a popular brand as well. So it's either Frontier or Noritsu. Do not get fooled by cold scan or Epson. No, 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 no. It's Noritsu or Frontier. Those are the two big ones in the film scanning business. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you guys some side by sides with the Negative Lab Pro on default versus what darkroom.com gave me. And also I used it in my Pentax and I used it a manual vintage lens to scan my film. So let's take a look. All right, so here is my first sample. On the left is the darkroom.com and on the right is Negative Lab Pro. Now, as you can already tell, there is two things that sticks out. The background, as you can see the sky in the darkroom.com, it's kind of gone. It's basically like almost overexposed, whereas Naked to Lab Pro, you retain a lot of the clouds. Yeah, look look at the difference between the skies in both images. Now, this is around one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm using Kodak Portra 400. And as you can see, the grass at the bottom, it's pretty much green. Actually, this whole shot by darken.com, this whole development looks a bit on the green side Whereas Negative Lab Pro, we are using the default and you're getting, I don't want to say accurate colors, but you're getting close to accurate colors. The grass is actually brown. So keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at the next image. All right, so here's our second sample. And on the left is the darken.com still. And on the right is Negative Lab Pro. Now we are still on default. I didn't adjust anything with Negative Lab Pro. And already, as you can tell, the sky is more pronounced with Negative Lab Pro versus darkroom.com yeah look look at the blues it's totally different and also as you can see the entire scene with the darkroom.com they gave me like this weird tint of green which was not the color of that day the actual color is what naked lab pro gave me yeah this is really accurate of that day one o'clock in the afternoon so yes the the background was that brown versus this green that the darkroom.com gave me it just yeah it seems like very stylistic choice so yeah that is something for you guys to know now let's take a look at the next test. So here is our third sample. On the left is the darkroom.com and on the right is Negative Lab Pro. And already it's the same thing goes, you know, um, you get clear skies. Actually, you get more defined skies with Negative Lab Pro, whereas the darkroom.com, whoever scanned this photo for me, I mean, they didn't care about the sky or anything. They just quickly auto expose everything and they just gave it to me for what it is. And yeah, you get, you're missing a lot of details right here. You cannot, you know, see anything in the background. This is, this is pretty scary. And also they still give me that weird tint of green in the background. So that's, that's a little worrisome. That means that they didn't bother to white balance my image pretty much. And so if you look at Nigga Lab Pro, that is the actual color of his coat and the background is that brown. It's not that green that Darkroom gave me. So let's take a closer look. Keep in mind, I am using a vintage lens and yeah, look at that. Look at that detail that I'm missing right there. That's from my vintage lens and the darkroom.com, you can see all that detail. So this is a fault on my part. I don't have the right equipment to scan this particular film. Actually I do, I'm just 
you know, pretending that I don't, just in case you guys fall in the same footsteps. If you guys don't have a good macro lens, this is what you might be getting. So yeah, um, definitely the darker.com. I guess the only pro that I could give them is that their image is really sharp. So the scanner is a really sharp scan, but the way they develop the film is really, uh, yeah, very auto. You lose a lot of detail and yeah, you lose that crop right there. As you can see, I'm missing that chunk of rock right there. Let's take a look on the left side. Am I missing anything? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm missing a bit of this lens right there. So I think that the darker.com, they do crop just a little bit and uh, yeah. But overall, I think if I was to use a sharper lens, I would probably get more of those details right there if that is important to you. To me, the most important part is the center of the frame, which is the subject, yeah. So just to wrap things up, with the Darker.com and the Negative Lab Pro, I would have to say, I would definitely pick Negative Lab Pro. Yeah, because the Darker.com, for this whole time, I actually thought that it was me, or the camera, or the film, that was doing this whole crazy contrast thing because I was always reading the metering in my camera. I always felt like I got it right at the beginning, but it turns out, I guess the scanner, the developer at the darkroom.com, he's probably booked and he's probably just hitting auto on every single film he gets and just shipping it as it is. Yeah, I'm getting the high contrast, the green tint. They're not fixing anything. They're just scanning it for you, right? So with that in mind, Negative Lab Pro was a rude awakening. Now I'm going to go through all my negatives, pick my favorite ones and start scanning them myself. And in the future, I'm going to definitely use a sharper lens and I'm definitely going to scan it myself. I'm not going to send it off to anyone to scan because it seems like whatever they give you, whatever professional scanner you guys go to, they're not going to allow you to adjust it at all. What you see is what you get pretty much, unless they do offer some sort of like special professional level where you could sit down with the developer and look at the film side by side and actually develop it on a one by one basis. But I think that might be a more expensive route. But yeah, I guess from here on out, I'm just gonna scan it myself, use a sharper lens, and I should be getting the best results then going to a professional scanner to get a scan. So, but anyways, thank you guys for checking back. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Definitely click like and subscribe and don't forget to check out the merch store and yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy. Peace.